All right, everybody. Um, so now we're going to do exponential functions. We're going to look at e to the x, and we're going to look at any other base to the power of x, which we represent as a to the x. So let's look at e to the x first. Let's start with the statement, natural log of e to the x is equal to x. That's true, if you remember, because natural log is base e. So really what we're saying is base e of e to the x is equal to x. If these bases match, it's just the exponent. Okay, so that's why that's a true statement. So I go, okay, let's take the derivative of the natural log of e to the x. So d over dx of what, what you do to one side, you have to do the other side, oh, is equal to d dx of x. All right, the derivative of the natural log, which if you just watched that video, is 1 is u primed over u. So in other words, 1 over e to the x times, now I'm going to write this as the derivative of e to the x. That's my u prime is equal to the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. <clears throat> so then I multiply the e to the x up, and I get the derivative of e to the x. This gets multiplied up there, is e to the x, All right? You can expand that to say the derivative of e to the u, where u is some function of x is equal to e to the u times u primed. Now, <clears throat> y is equal to a to the x. a is any base. It's a constant. 2 to the x, 3 to the x, whatever. This one, what I'm going to do, again, I'm doing it a little differently than um, jm, but that's good. I think it's good to see two different ways to do it. I, because I don't like the exponent, I'm going to natural log both sides of this function. That's going to bring down this x. So I end up with the natural log of y is equal to x natural log of a. The derivative of the natural log, so on this side, so now I'm doing the derivative. I'm doing the derivative of that. It just looks backwards. So the derivative of the natural log of y is y primed over y. All right, that's from the previous video. The derivative of this, remember a is, natural log, a is a constant, so the natural log of a is some constant. Derivative of x is just 1. So I get y primed over y is equal to natural log of a. I'm solving for y prime because I want to know the derivative. Right? Because this is what y prime is. So y prime, I multiply the y up. We defined y right at the beginning to be a to the power of x. So y prime is equal to a to the power of x times the natural log of a. Conversely, you can expand that to say the derivative with respect to x of a to the u, where u is a function of, of uh, x, is a to the u times the natural log of a times u primed. All right, so let's do a few examples. The e to the x stuff is pretty straightforward, so we can just start with the derivative of e to the x squared. All right, well, look at the formula right here. It's e to the u, so whatever that is, e to the x squared times whatever the derivative of the exponent is, 2x. Done. That's it. That's all you have to do. If we write <clears throat> the derivative of e to the sine of x squared, well, let's just rewrite the e sine x squared times, now you do the derivative of the exponent which is going to be chain rule here. What's the derivative of sine? Is cosine of x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. I mean, you clean that up to write 2x e to the sine x squared times cos of x squared. And that's it. All right, so when you're doing the derivative of e, it's just whatever that function, the original function is, times the derivative of the exponent. That is it. All right, the a's, other bases are a little more involved, but 
still fairly straightforward. If I ask for the derivative of 2 to the 3x, well, where's our formula? Here's our formula. It's just the function. So I write 2 to the power of 3x times the natural log of the base, so in this case, natural log of 2, times, again, you have to use chain rule, the derivative of the exponent, which is 3x. Again, you would clean that up and probably write 3x2 to the 3x natural log of 2 or some combination there. Do not combine the 3 and the 2. Do not combine those, okay? Because they have different exponents. So this is your answer. Um, okay. What if we write y is equal to? 3 to the power of 2t times t squared. Okay, so this is a product rule question. So y prime, product rule says the derivative of the first function. What's the derivative of 3t to the power of t? Well, it's that function times the natural log of the base times the derivative of the exponent, which is 2, times the first function t squared, plus the derivative of the second function, which is 2t, times the first function, 3 to the power of 2t. I mean, you could clean this up by taking out a 3 to the power of 2t and a 2t, so 3 to the 2t, the 2t comes out, this one turns into natural log of 3, times t, because that was the power of 2, plus that's gone, and that's gone, so plus 1. I don't know if that's cleaner, but it's a little bit. Um, the other, let's look at, I just want to show you a little trick here. 5. <clears throat> y is equal to, I don't know, 2 to the power of 3t over t. Okay. This looks like a um, quotient rule problem. So if I want to do y primed, I'm going to do the derivative of the top, which is 2 times 3t times the natural log of the base times the derivative of the exponent, which is 3, times the bottom, t minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, times 2 to the power of 3t over the bottom squared, t squared. And then we could clean that up by taking a 2 to the power of 3t out. I'm not sure if that helps us, but 2 to the 3t comes out, and I'm left with natural log of 2 times 3t minus 1 over t squared. Can't really do much than that. Now, there's another way to solve this problem. What you can do is when you get things like this, if you don't like the looks of them, you can actually log both sides, which might seem um, strange at first. But what that does is it allows you to use log rules to break up this bit of a mess. So then I, take, I can break this up because we are dividing our arguments, which means we are subtracting them. Because this is a log, I'm allowed to bring the exponent down. And then you can do the derivative. So now I'm doing the derivative of this whole thing with respect to t. So the derivative of natural log of y, I did it up here when we were doing the proof, um, is y primed over y. Okay, it's from a previous video, so I got y prime over y. The derivative of this, that's a constant, so the derivative of 3t with respect to t is just 3. 
minus derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t. So then I want y primed. So I'm going to move this y up. Then we got y primed is equal to y times 3 natural log of 2 minus 1 over t. What was y? We defined it right at the beginning. It's that function. So it's 2 to the power of 3t over t. 2 to the power of 3t over t. Natural log of 2 minus 1 over t. If you really wanted to clean it up, you can move that up. Natural log of 8 minus 1 over t. So, you don't have to do it that way, but when you get more complicated functions, that's called logarithmic derivation, and I'll talk about that probably next Wednesday. It allows you to take a complex function and break it up into logs, and logs are actually, natural logs are easy to derive. All right, so your questions for these things are, e to the u stuff is page 352, numbers 33 to 53 odd, that's e to the x, the derivative of e to the x stuff. <clears throat> and then derivative of a to the x, this kind of stuff we just did, is page 362, numbers 37 to 45 odd. Again, I'll go over some of this stuff on Wednesday, but we'll probably be doing uh, integration then, so I strongly encourage you to practice this. All right, have a good weekend, people.